Good morning, Joy Nostalge, and welcome to another Wellness Wednesday. And uh, we today we welcome a brand new month of September. And with a new month comes a new monthly value, a, a new christ Jude value. And the value is unity. So for this Wednesday, we begin a new series for the month. For this Wednesday, we have a new speaker. Our new speaker is currently a board member of the Asia Pacific Association for Social Work Education, a resource person for the Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process, the development of guidelines on preventing, countering, and transforming violent extremism, and representative and lead trainer at the UP Diliman Pahinungod Psychosocial Program. Along with many other accolades, she has given numerous seminars focusing on working together, counseling, and emotional recovery. Here to talk about um, the Filipino culture of selflessness, I'd like to welcome Dr. Joima Ang Reyes. Good morning, doctor. Thank you very much, Jello. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. I think uh, the, the theme for this month is exciting. So let's make the morning more exciting. I'm just worried because it rained heavily today. So I'm praying that the <laughs> Wi-Fi connection won't break. But anyway, thank you for that kind introduction. And um, let me begin. Uh, good morning. Let me begin by doing the screen share for everyone. My topic today is about the Filipino culture of selflessness. I guess among all the ASEAN Pacific, I'm very active in ASEAN, uh, ASEAN social work conventions. No? And one of the things that is very basic among ASEAN, specifically the Filipinos, is the culture of selflessness. And I think um, the topic today, how we transform from individualism to collectivism, is a journey we take on, review, resonate with, and I think lived with uh, as, as seen from your company's um, values and virtues. Let me begin by talking about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, you know, not only in the Philippines, but globally. Um, from the time we heard what happened from March, all of us had different um, reactions to it. The idea of being um, scared about the impact of COVID no? as much as for the safety of ourselves, for our families, for our community. We are lost in a certain moment of trying to figure out where to from here. And that is a very um, normal feeling of being afraid, of being um, of wondering and anxious no? of what might happen because even up to now, it's already September and we haven't even flattened the curve. So where to? And given this time, um, where to from here? Okay. I, I come across uh, an article from the Trauma Resiliency Model and it talked about how we can transcend. You know, How am I focusing my attention during the pandemic? I'm pretty sure all of us uh, after you know uh, the the pandemic was uh, put in announced no and we are in a lockdown the red zone most of us have had this feeling negative thoughts keep recurring you know um, sometimes you send posts in the media out of fear you keep on reposting what other people are 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 posting it's not because you want to to scare other people but it's because it's your way also of wanting to share what knowledge you have no? um, and sometimes you complain and seek to blame others you know and it's a normal like specifically work from home setting right now all the children are online learning so it's difficult to to do your job at home and at the same time monitor classes um, that is going on you know sometimes you over consume news and media you know so i have one friend who spent like six hours a day monitoring before now what is happening and I kept telling her to just turn it off you know when the morning when you hear the news turn it off or you either can choose morning news or evening news 
and then do something else you know to 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 be able to distract yourself or manage that anxiety people sometimes disconnect from others you know and the physical distancing we do, i don't like it social distancing it's like physical distancing because we can't the, the usual things that we do you know, specifically for the young generation that we're in you unwind every friday saturday night to be with your friends you know get bonding as all of a sudden has to stop and for most people those bonding moments are are the ones that keeps them afloat you know, amidst the the many many challenges sometimes people have trouble sleeping you know and and there are times behavior changes comes you know you seek to control other people uh, or events to feel safer so in other words oh don't get out of the house anymore true naman but then no wala ka nang pagkain you don't want to go out and sometimes it became to a point that it becomes so um uh, limiting already and then you find yourself with negative emotions, no? spilling over others. Suddenly, you were, you were a happy person before, but now all of a sudden, little things become big things. You know? Others naman would, ayan, it's either binge drinking, binge eating, binge teleserie, <laughs> and all the stuff. No? And sometimes, to a certain degree, other people who cannot control themselves go to the aggression state. Now, hopefully, given the months that had passed, the thing that helps us towards um, going to that resilient zone is we have identified at this point in time resources that you may have. I think though this is wonderful that your company, Join Your Style, had started with. Um, and it's very um, important. Why? Because this is a form of resourcing for you to give each other support. And this is already a part of reaching out, no? serving others no? through through wellness uh, themes that you may have. It may not resonate with you at one point in time, other talks, but there will come a point in time that there might be others whom mm, you have an aha moment with, okay? And then you identify sensations connected to the emotions and thoughts, you know. I understand it's about acknowledging what we feel, why we're behaving that way so that we can find out what truly is causing the distress, you know. And that is very important because emotional health, among other things, no, is very, very important to be able to process yourself, to be in a space and zone that you are um, stable, to be able to think rationally and behave rationally and um, do about with your daily chores, no. Um, you identify distressing sensations and you are able to as get away from it, shift your attention from, okay? And you identify self-calming uh, activities. Cup of coffee, you know, I stand up first, I walk out. Even if I don't have a garden, you would say, just stepping out of the house, you know, breathe uh, uh, air, you know, that would be good. Because that is very important for you to be able to go to the last stage of being able to uh, be empathetic to the concerns of others. Okay? You are able to control or comfort those who grieve specifically uh, now. Before when March, April, May, um, COVID death and casualties are just numbers and statistics for most of us. But right now, it has become... it's just come closer to home. We have friends, whose father, brother, mother, you know, members of the family who have been um, affected and have passed on because of COVID. And if you are in this state on the blue zone, you are able to give comfort. You know? And that is part of reaching out. That is part of being uh, in a collective mode of reaching out to other people. You remind yourself that we are all in this together. So what happens in, in, in our home, in our community, in our wider uh, society, even the global world, no? is, is part of going to, if it's part of what we're going to happen to us, to our future, you know. You also want to have this sense of being grateful, you know, for the many little things that comes your way. And this gratefulness can come in so many uh, packets, small packets of blessings. You know, it's tweaking the mind that instead of looking at the bad things, we have blessings and then we are able to reach out and, 
and support more. Um, with compassion, no? I, I always say you have to be compassionate first to yourself, okay? So that you will be extending the same compassion towards others. It's important because um, the very uh, tool that you use, no? that you will be using in terms of reaching out to others is a tool of the self, the giving of the self. No? Right now, reaching out, being connected to each other, being um, you know, socially uh, responsible comes in many ways and forms. And by being compassionate, it means to say if you are tired, then rest. If you have not eaten and it's already 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock because you're doing something else, stop for a while. The 15 minutes or 30 minutes that you will stop, you know, uh, may, may, may hinder what you're doing, but it's about nourishing yourself. Therefore, if your state of being is on a neutral sense, you know, balanced state, you are more compassionate to be able to listen to others, share with others, reach out to others. And lastly, it is because of these instances that you will be able to reach out and support other people, family, friends, and the wider community and the clientele that you will be serving. Unity is one of the core values of your company, Joy Nostal. And it is very important, specifically at this time and space and time with this given situation, why are we focusing on unity? Okay. You define unity as being one in soul, mind, and body. Meaning to say, whatever it is that you think, you do, you believe in. Okay. It's, it's technically a whole package. It is being together as a family, your team. Uh, once again, I was saying, by doing this, it's like taking care of the family. You're all a part of a big family that um, practically values, you know, um, the essence of supporting each other. You know, when we are we were here younger, not so long ago, <laughs> and we have fights. There, I never fights, but we have you know many things that comes our way, challenges that comes our way. We can always go to our family, right? And um, your core value indicates that the very strong foundation of where your company stands is treating each other as one, you know, as the core, as a family member. It is also important because as you take care of each other, your community, your a level of networks, you also are service for others, meaning to say, um, you do provide service for others because your family does not only limit itself to the compound of your company, but to the people that you served along the way. And that is very, very important because if you treat other people in the community as family members, then you would afford the same respect, the same um, highlights, the importance, you know and uh, reaching out and doing the best you can so that you will be able to serve. Aligned in diversity. This is one thing I really like uh, the most because amidst all of the things that's happening with, along, no? differences in politics, differences in um, perspectives, you know, your company made it a point to make diversity not an issue but diversity as the blending power. Believing that each one has unique features, has unique characteristics, has unique gifts, and given that diversity, we can blend it together to make one unified state of um, action, vision, and values. And therefore, it's unanimously agreed upon that it's everything, it's everywhere, okay? But given now the situation, the very question, it's easy to do that in times of, uh, you know, uh, normal times, pre-COVID times. But the question now is how do we practice unity and collectivism amidst this very challenging times, right? And I think um, these are questions also with a lot of social development workers, a lot of social workers, a lot of people in the field working for other people. 
no fundings are available, you know, all of a sudden the fundings drop, everything. How do you continue to, to, to produce or practice unity and collectivism amidst these challenging times? I think the foundation of unity lies in the very context of the Filipino culture of selflessness, you know. Even before, okay, we were conquered, you know, for the young generation out there, even before the Spanish time, um, pre-Spanish time, there has already been a sense of um, selflessness among the Filipinos, okay? And bayanihan is one of the concepts, even in Psikolohi ang Pilipino, would tell you that it is working towards together. Bayanihan is working together so the community will reap and share in a bountiful harvest you know we work together we 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 plan together during those times we share each other's burden and in the end we help each other out doing that way bayanihan is working together to achieve a common noble purpose and equitably sharing the fruits of labor so it's embedded already in our culture. It's embedded in the very core nature of our being. You ever wonder why there are times, you know, some a lot of my friends are are are, are having problems uh, with certain things. You know, you have your own share of challenges also. But in a way, it's 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 like natural to you to be of service also to others because it's already ingrained in our system, in our psych system as Filipinos. Now, the Filipinos' indigenous values is about captive versus nationalistic consciousness. So in other words, do we want to, um, is it be because of looking after only of individual interests or are we looking at the national consciousness and the national interest of everybody? Familial and community relationships and belief in God and the spirit world is one of the binding forces in the Filipino culture given to be as a collective. So it's already there, you know, the belief in God, uh, the spirit world, you know, in terms of um, our relationship, you know, relationship is very, very important, positive, engaging in positive relationship. I, I have the honor of uh, knowing this two um, uh, what do I say, icons in terms of uh, social development work no? in the University of the Philippines in Deleman. One is uh, our former dean, Silvia Guerrero, and she described Bayanihan um, embodies a mutual assistance and self-help among equals or togetherness in a common effort. You know? um, in our college, we have many we have four actually courses. We have social work, community development, women's studies, and the doctor in social development. And given the task, all of us work together for common goal, social development work. And um, Dean, uh, our former Dean Silvia Claudio was emphasizing that to have the spirit of reaching out, of collectivism, it has to be of a mutual assistance, okay? That if you can help yourself, you help yourself. But if you can help others, the more important it is. Because it is by being together without uh, discrimination that you will be able to have common goods, common, common goals achieve. Another one is um, from the head of uh, the UP Diliman Psychosocial uh, pahinungod no, of, of all the systems in, in the Philippines. Dr. Grace Agiling Dalisay said, it is a different assistance for it connotes heroism, bayani. No? Regardless of existing social ranking and social structures, leadership roles, and authority relationships. So according to Dean um, Dalisay, being able to be a part of a bayanihan effort connotes that it's a way of um, promoting heroism from the word bayani because we set aside when we reach out to other people we set aside their social ranking who you may be whatever you might be in whatever leadership capacity technically structurally that you have or authority capacity that you have it is about common good it is about reaching out to others giving that assistance is already making it a heroic heroic act okay now the quality of life, according to 
the Filipino values, when you understand the universality of it, is that the quality of life is attained because values are. What are values? Why is it important? No? Because it's an instigators of our actions. Our value system becomes our compass, navigates us to what action we should take. So I normally say when I teach my student, you know, if you say something and do uh, uh, other things, that means to say there's no match, then there is discrepancy, then you have to reflect, okay? Why is the things that you are talking about in terms of doing good, etc., turns out to be the opposite. So you need to retrospect on that because true values, okay, really embedded in each and every one of us becomes the compass in our life. It becomes instigators of our action, meaning to say whatever our action would be comes from the sets of values. Now, how do you define values? Values in the context of what we value in terms of either the, the principle, no, the motto, the ideals, the person, events, place. So people with various values and, and how they rank those values becomes the guide light for them in terms of what action to take. It also prospect for commitment. So we say if, if the company really is a unifying uh, core value, that no one is left behind, we're all in this together, then the prospect of commitment becomes very clear, meaning to say whatever happens in the circumference of uh, the existence now, you still live up to it. And sabi nga natin, huh? it's very easy to be a person with you know, innate value during good times. But the challenge of really finding out you know, for yourself and for others how committed you are to those values are facing circumstances like this. Now, reason and standard for behavior and expression is related to instigator of action because our behavior, our standard of expression is, is dictated upon by the values that we have. Like, for example, it's always embedded in the mind of all social development workers. It's, it's, you know, no matter who you are talking to, give the same respect. You know, it's not about their social rank. Probably they are in that situation because circumstances in life weren't that good to them. So they were, you know, in that particular situation. So those who are given on the side of the realm that you are in an okay situation, you afford the same courtesy. You know, when you speak to a person who was homeless, for example, and you speak to the person with respect, the person, you already reached out to the person by making the person feel, no, I, I, I am worthy because this person who is very educated is talking to me with respect, you know? And there's, and there's something very, very powerful for that. Something very powerful because you lift up the spirit of the person that nothing can ever uh, sort of substitute for that aspect. Values ground our obligations, our beliefs, our ideals, and the attitude when we reach out to people. So human being as a person, how do we now look at it? So as a person, let's one by one look into very, very quickly. Uh, there are three characteristics of a person. The act of reflection, the person who can reflect. One thing happened to me, I reflect on it, right? um, what did I do right that I would amplify the next time? What are the things that was challenging for me and how I can uh, sort of change that? No? The act of abstraction would be um, enabled to um, identify what are the commonalities to be able to come up with an essential list of what is more important. Like for example, you're looking at other uh, concerns and all of a sudden you have to have this um, uh, list, no? What are the things that I need to focus on if I'm working with people, I'm working with low cost housing, how can I best serve, no? So it's abstracting what are the essential part of it and then putting it together to give you a scenario, okay? And the most important part is the act of loving. You know, why is it the act of loving? A person is capable of loving because if a person is capable of loving, genuine loving, then the values of trust, unity, you know, 
perseverance is there because we want to share that. Okay. Now, when we look at individualism, we consider this as a low context culture. Why do we not, not really on a bad side, but meaning to say, um, these are the tendency to view self as independent and are um, chopped away from others. Now, being independent is not looked at as bad, but being independent as you're not a team player is something else. Okay? Tendency for personal, familial, communal goals to be unaligned, meaning to say a person needs to understand my personal goal affects my family's goal, my community's goal. If they are not matching, they do not complement at a certain wavelength, then there might be some issues or conflict. Okay? Tendency for social behaviors to be guided by personal attitude, needs, rights, and contract. Okay? As said earlier, our value system becomes the indicator for our behavior. So therefore, it would reflect, you know, if you're only um, so much of thinking about oneself all the time, then the attitude that you have, you know, the things that you would put up, would only about serving oneself. It's also about the tendency for a relationship to be guided by consideration or advantages and disadvantages of those relationships. Not on a bigger scale, in the long run, you, know, you weigh it on that aspect. Again, we are not saying that at making way in consideration of the advantages or disadvantages um, is bad. But if it only is about weighing it for yourself and not for others, okay, uh, the people that is involved, the, the, the family the, that you belong to, then it becomes something that you can look into and reflect, okay? Individuals with predominant patterns on this dimension may be referred to as idiocentric, you know, at this point time. Now, what do we want to do from having that individualistic concept? We want to move forward to collectivism. Why? Because we view ourselves not just as independent, but interdependent. We are related to other uh, system. It's like, you know, when you open a car and uh, switch the car and one spark plug is missing, even if it's just a tiny spark plug, you know, the car won't run. And then <clears throat> seeing ourselves that way, we are independent, interdependent with one another, interrelated with one another. Therefore, meaning to say what happens to me, what affects me, Will affects my might affect my coworker, might affect the delivery of our services, might affect the benefits of the client that we serve. Okay. We also say <clears throat> if we are in a collectivism mindset, we are aligning our personal and familial and communal goal, you know. So it, it matches, you know, that when I think for myself. I consider what's best also for my family. I consider also what's best for my, my work, uh, my company. I also consider what is best for the people that I serve, what the company that, uh, that the, the clients that we serve. You know? The tendency for social behaviors to be guided by norms, obligations, and duties that are aligned and accepted for the benefit of others. And the tendency for relationships to be maintained for the importance of the social context. So it's about, hindi ito yung negative portion na ano lang ah, uh, smooth interpersonal relationship lang to the negative uh, action. It's about, there are things in life that you choose your battle. You, know, you choose your battle. Not all the time is worth, not all, all issues are worth um, discussing, fighting, debating. You know, there are issues of, Simply saying that, you know, we have an acceptance, you know, that you might have a different perspective from my perspective, but that doesn't mean it makes my perspective lesser than yours, okay? It's an admission that people do have separate uh, ideas and it's important to collectively work on those ideas, the diversity of those ideas, and make those ideas work you know, to be able to maximize, okay? And individuals with predominant patterns is what we call allocentric in this particular line. 
So therefore, individualism and collectivism, when you look at it, it's a construct, you know. And um, in, in such norms about human relationships is there. It's a mixture. Even individuals have mixed con um, cultures and norms acceptable. What is important is to explore what is true for an indiv individual's experience of culture that would make it uh, shared no, with others in the process. Okay. The four dimensions that you can use to describe is the self. You know, who am I? Okay. Um, what is it that you know keeps me going every day now, given the situation? What keeps me going? You know, what are the goals that I've set you know, for myself, for my family, my work, the clients that I serve? What are my obligations? You know, um, to myself. You no, know? very important. Don't lose that. You know. Um, to yourself, to your family, you know, to everybody. And what is the type of relationship that is important to you, you know, um, in terms of maintaining that social relationship, camaraderie, you know, the bond, the unity uh, that speaks of the core essence of uh, the company. In other words, key concepts to recall. It's one of the favorite one when Miller... Elaine Miller Caras was saying, being unified is an individual's and community's ability to identify and utilize individual and collective strengths in living fully in the present moment and to thrive while managing the activities of daily living. Meaning to say, if we want to be united, it is not just enough for us to identify what are the realms that we want to be united upon? But we have to utilize both the individual, our own, and the collective strength of the whole community to be able to make it work, to be able to put it in action. Okay? Being united that was having the consciousness of collective responsibility, which extends from ourselves, our family, to other families in the wider community. It's about social responsibility. It's not just uh, like taking care of our, it's not just one sector who has the social responsibility. Imagine if each one of us assume that we are responsible for ourselves, our family, our environment, no? or specifically now our global environment, then we would care for it. You know? a, a long time ago, my kids, when they were small, embedded in the concept that we are responsible for our environment. So even, eating candy they don't throw it away they put it in their pockets because that's the way we were trained they, they put it in their pockets and you know, until they see a trash can then they would throw it away and it amazes me now how we don't see it anymore we go out you know every we go to a place before pre uh, pandemic time everything you no know, and to me the beach you know all all uh, sorts of trash is around us. So it's about wanting to be, assume that social responsibility based on the unifying concept of we have to think on a collective. It is, we're all in this together, okay? We are all interdependent and interrelated. What happens to me affects you, affects society, and what happens to our country is technically affected by the global aspect. Now, how these are very uh, short tips. No, I think my time is running out. <laughs> okay, what are ways towards collectivism? Ways to build a community based on unity. Okay, first, try to connect. No, connect with each other. It is the key to override physical distancing right now. And by connecting, you are actually doing. A unifying act of collectivism. Why? Because you ask your friend well, how they're doing, you know, ask your client, have you gotten the services that you are um, supposed to be getting? Checking up on people is a way to connect. You reinvent, no? regain your social relationship. Right now, it may be very taxing for us because I'm pretty sure all of us are, are subjected to the Zoom platform. No? But there are other ways of, of connecting, you know. Um, to be able to regain that um, 
a little sense of normality of helping out. No? Connecting with other families and friends in larger communities would give us a sense of unity, specifically during lockdown. You know? um, there are neighbors that you might have, that you might have a little extra. It's a way of reaching out. You know? Some, I have a very good friend uh, whose way of connecting with other people is asking, what are your needs? You know, for example, um, because right now you can't go out. So she, she now have a theme per month. Like for example, one friend would say, you know, I need to consult online. So what do I do? So my friend would do, you know, she would now research, find all the hospitals that provides online consult and then spread it around, give it around, you know. So that's a way of connecting. And it's also one of being collective that, you know, given that you are, alone that you cannot drive perhaps and you have seen your parents to look after to you know um these are small ways you know connect with other groups to reach out and be a part of a new network so it's important you know that right now we're reaching out to one another we're talking to one another and it's an honor to be here this morning so knowing that there's a group of young people actually um spearheading this uh, wellness series is a way actually to connect with each one of you, you know, so that one way or the other, you, you, you keep the, the radar of connectivity. Okay. Second, keep learning. I think one of the things that uh, for you to be able to reach out you know, collective, you have to keep on learning. Now the work from home scheme can provide many things to explore many things. You rekindle many passion, learn new habits that gives you a sense of accomplishment. And by doing this, um, you can also share what you learn in your social, social system. You know, I have a friend who's very, very good in cooking and she would video, um, the way she would cook a certain dish and then she would send it to all her friends, you know? And then we would follow, okay? And that's, that's a way of capacitating people because not everybody is good in the kitchen, all right? So that's way of reaching out also in terms of, okay, because I think the lockdown, yun na naging problema natin, yung adobo ng lunes hanggang Friday, yun ang ulam natin, di ba? So I think that's a, a welcome change. So there's so many things that you can learn and learning it, would be sharing it either um, to the person that you talk to, your, your colleagues, no? even with the, the community that you serve. Okay? Take notice. This is one of the favorite things I like to do. And sometimes I neglect. You know? We appreciate. We need to appreciate little things. You celebrate the many things surrounding us that we have not noticed in the past. You know? The many things we need to notice to appreciate to keep us very happy and to look out for strengths among ourselves and others to create that unifying effort for positive change. I think one of the things um, in, in, in the brain study, there is what you call the neoplasticity. Now, that particular research uh, is a breakthrough in the concept of brain development. Why? Because old concept of brain studies would tell you, oh, well, and these are the things I'm so used to, that's not going to change anymore. Okay, but neoplasticity on your time, you may want to look into it, no? Tells you that no, the brain can actually be rewired. Meaning to say, if you are bent on doing this habit every morning, every day, okay? You take one little step to do it on a different way. Then by doing that different way, slowly you push yourself towards taking that different path. Okay, so the thing before the old habits, you know, behavior, things that we are so used to, it's because it's embedded already in our mind, no? So it tells us that if we do take notice, if we have, you know, we're sad, we're angry, we're, you know, so many things of the job that you need to do, um, take notice of the little blessing that comes along your way, you know, probably in the house, you know, how you're sister who have never helped before in cleaning the house have suddenly step up and help no those are things to celebrate with all of a sudden your daughter my daughter just came in a while ago and gave me a cup of coffee that is, is this that is something nice you know and we can also share this to other people by you know asking them oh how are you now today you know how are you doing what I, is there anything that i can do to be able to assist you so that we can allow ourselves and so we can embrace giving you know, sharing selflessly giving support to other people 
giving support to other people comes in many ways, not just financial. It can be psychological. It can be emotional. It can be spiritual. No? It can be in, in the job that you do, even providing them with a very clear, simple, step-by-step -step things to understand before they enter into a contract is also part of giving. You know, understanding where they are coming from. A long time ago, a very good professor of mine had told me that you have to be able to put yourself in the shoes of the person that you are helping so that you would know in that person's lens how that person views things, how that person um, analyzes things, how that person um, sort of processes things. Not to discriminate, but to understand where you are supposed to begin. Okay? Now, the things, that, the tips, you know, eventually all um, processing so that we will be able to come into this portion of resilience zone, of wanting to be compassionate to ourselves and to others, empathic to concerns and listening to others, and being able to reach out to others and supporting friends. So on a good day, you write a statement of encouragement to yourself. You know, write a statement of encouragement. Statement of encouragement of service to others. You know, how would you want that service to others to look like you know, in the context of uh, collective thoughts? How would you want to empower you know, the community and state about the unity? amidst diversity okay write a statement how would you want to do that you know from individual to collective social spiritual cultural financial responsibility towards others how would you be able to manifest that unifying stance of reaching out to others you know and lastly write a strong statement of encouragement to yourself how you will be able to become an agent of collective change Okay. So with that, thank you very much and uh, an honor to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, we are also in equally honored and blessed to have you with us. No? And your talk uh, came at such a very timely uh, moment in our lives. Now, I'd like to comment on uh, one thing you said. No, Well, many things you said. Uh, we Filipinos, uh, we are filial in nature, meaning we are a very family-oriented people. And uh, our sense of family extends beyond our households. Right? We, all, we are proud to be Pinoy. We, we see our, our neighbors, our friends as our family as well. No? And it's during these difficult times that our sense and value of unity and being family-oriented is tested. Right? More than just mm. being united in our work, more than just being united with our goals, diba? unity also brings with us sincere concern for one another. Mm. As you said, what affects one person in the community has a ripple effect to many others in the community. If we are truly united, we have to acknowledge this and we have to actively look out for one another's welfare, especially it's during a very difficult time. No? Mm. Very true, yeah. I think it's very important that um, the brain waves, you know, given, given our growing up years, you know, most of the time, and it's been a fascination to me. I've been in the teaching profession for more than three decades now, and I hope uh, there's some wisdom there. Every time a semester would begin, I always ask, this is a sort of a, a social uh, test, you know? hmm. and I would ask my students, now, give me three things that you like about yourself you know the values that you love about yourself and it it's they have a difficult time identifying but if you ask the second question well okay if you're done with the values that you're proud of yourself you know give me three things you don't like about yourself and the the, the, the list goes a long 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 list right right of course and i think it's because also we need to understand that we are all product of our family okay mm -hmm. And given the situation, we try to do the best that we can, you know, in the family system. But there are also some internal wounds along the way that sometimes sort of separate that unity, crash that unity apart. And therefore, you know, in ano tayo, tayo. But I think the common line is 
recognizing that each one have weaknesses mm -hmm. that the person needs to develop, okay? Yeah. And that person, despite the many weaknesses, always have strength within that we need to bring out, we need to explore, we need the person to see and realize that, and us, the family around, to help that person magnify that strength so that it becomes more powerful than the weaknesses. Right. And that's what unity is about in that context. Correct. No? So thank you for that, Doc Joey. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to uh, welcome my co-panelists on board. So co-panelists, kindly turn on your uh, video and audio so we can see and hear Hello. you. Hello. Know? So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, morning ma'am. Good morning. Morning, po. and I'd like to uh, introduce first, no, uh, my partner for this morning. Uh, she is the investment management officer from the EMU, Miss Jaya Reyes. So good morning, Miss Jaya. So, uh, what are your thoughts, po, based on this morning's uh, talk? Okay. So, uh, first of all, let me thank everyone who is watching right now uh, for taking time off their busy schedule and spend time with us um, uh, in this very, very uh, informative webinar uh, given by Ms. Uh, Dr. Joima um, Reyes. And um, I would like to uh, thank uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Joey, Joima Reyes uh, for making us aware of uh, the difference between the individualism and collectivism concept uh, and that the individualism concept is is really not that bad I, I just realized that i thought it's you're you're trying to influence us to collectivism because the other one has more disadvantages but uh i am now aware that it's 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 just uh a different uh it's a lower context right so it's it's really it has its its, its plus and minuses i guess mm -hmm. and uh i would um i also learned that um uh the journey to our resilient zone uh requires us to be aware of um of our um of our own uh resources so our, our weaknesses own, um, uh, because I, I also can relate to that. I am guilty of over-consuming news. So that's why uh, during the, the COVID, uh, the height of the COVID um, uh, pandemic. And uh, I also tried to, so in, I am now in my journey to the resilient zone. And I am trying to uh, remember my, my self-calming gestures. Yes. And I, I try to be aware of the people around me. And so uh, I hope that I will be successful in getting there. So, um, and I also learned today that um, we have to keep connecting to other people and keep learning and taking notice of certain, of quote unquote, little things uh, in our lives. And then uh, of not, uh, of sharing and giving, of continuing to share and give to others so that we can have, achieve a unified, um, uh, position. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I think the wonderful thing, you know, mm -hmm. I like what you have emphasized in the context of um, being able to uh, go back to your resilience zone by being very conscious no? that you need to have identify your own resources, you know, because those are the things that you cling on to that helps you, you know, and in the process of doing so, helps you now in a very stable mind so that reaching out in service to others is, is not anymore a burden but becomes a mission. You know? So thank you for that uh, reflection, Jaya. Hope to meet you sometime soon, the coffee time. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jaya. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jaya. So Ms. Jaya, uh, who are our other panelists for this morning? Okay, uh, for this morning, uh, I am honored to be joined by four other amazing panelists who will share their insights and key, and key takeaways from Dr. Juima Ang's presentation. So let's get started with the panel introductions. The first one is Ms. Rina Villariza, Business Policy Officer from PDU. Um, 
she will she will give her thoughts um after i introduce everyone along can i just give the names of the others so yeah. rina will be followed by jobs reyes uh brand and public relations head from rmu and then um we will have red reggie and eza uh actually her uh, actually his uh, designation is quality inspector but she, but he told me last night that he is uh design management manager all the design management from PDU and last but not least is Mr. Christian De Caso project assistant from FDU so uh can we start with Rina hello good morning yeah. everyone good morning Ms. Rina thank you Ms. Joey thank you thank Jaya you. hi Jello hi morning actually um Yeah. Ah, Rina Villariza from Project Development Unit, uh business policy officer. So, yeah, for this morning it gets me thinking na it it made me realize na that we really need to be resilient especially in what we're experiencing now. So, have it made me thinking if I've been in this trauma to become more resilient. Yes, I did. uh from being afraid to thinking of what can i do or what can we do to be grateful that we can get through this together especially at joy nostalgia uh, like with miss jovi uh observe kanina uh, that we seems like we're we're really together we're quiet uh close to each other so Ganun po kami sa join us to Joey. So really like the energy. Other. Yeah. I made a comment ago. Is that was this my 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 video was off and I was listening to the batuhan ng mga mga chief. Saya naman ni ko para sa sarap ng after hours hindi during office hours. But after hours the energy is there and uh, I like it. I like it. It's really really good. And and to add on, it's I'm sure we feel that it's more fun and it's more rewarding if we do things with someone and for someone. And also, uh, you discuss about values, be, the being our compass. So, so for me, it's it's really something. Uh, we need to go back to our inner compass, our purpose in life. The purpose of God for us, so so we can get through this and all of this. Uh, we're not just the one experiencing it; it's the world is experiencing it, and it's a good thing because uh, uh, everyone is uh, finding a cure for this. Not only in the Philippines or in the U.S., but everyone. Russia is involved, China, Chinese, and <laughs> and and it is a good thing. Actually, ma'am, on on your tips and the on the, on how to the ways to build the collectivism, um, actually we're experiencing it. Uh, oh, to connect, yeah, to connect. Uh, Zoom becomes the most downloaded app. To keep learning, to keep yeah. learning, uh, to keep learning. Uh, there are uh, uh online courses came up. So, So that's it, and 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 most in, importantly, it's the giving and taking notice and become more appreciative of the little things, the little things in life. Thank you, thank you, Miss Joy, for reminding us. Wonderful, Rina. Thank you so much for that. Thank, thank you, Miss Rina. Rina. Thank you. And then we move on to jobs. Good morning. I hope you can hear me. Medyo intermittent. Bigla may an- ano sa akin, notification, intermittent ang <laughs> connection ko. <laughs> Anyways, um, good morning everyone. Um, thank you, Miss uh, Joey, for the for the presentation. Uh, so we learned a lot about unity today. Um, yung key takeaways ko naman is, um, as mentioned by Miss Rina, you mentioned that true values become the compass of our lives, um, instigator of actions, guideline on what action to take. And, and um, also yung difference ng indiv- individualism and uh, collectivism. Siyempre yung nandun yung um, naiintindihan mo what is interdependence and uh, um, 
why are how are we interrelated in everything we do actually in talaga in everything we do we are very much connected so pag may ginawa kang isa <laughs> affected yung iba like for example as you mentioned nagtapon ka ng basura sa daan i'm sure maapektuhan environment mo and all others diba tapos um in terms of um you mentioned earlier that um there's unity uh, amidst diversity uh when i was in college meron kaming um political group and we had this um motto we had this um battle cry na we are united although we are different so lahat kami we are very much different in values in um personality medyo mga weirdo weirdo yung iba iba nerdy nerdy but we are connected in one um um goal that is to change uh, the politics in our society parang ganun so um since college medyo naiintindihan ko na siya and um actually today mas naiintindihan ko yung uh, talagang interrelated tayo in whatever we do yun and um also um yung tips mo ma'am kanina yung uh, ways and tips it's like connect keep learning take notice and giving yan so may mga um lahat yan medyo importante siya sa atin today in this uh, pandemic um para makarating tayo dun sa ating so we, we can reach the resilient zone um and speaking of resilient zone there's a part of uh, it mentions there um that i can comfort uh those who are in grief um unfortunately as you mentioned earlier also um for others it's um the the cash the cases of pandemic of of uh, covid-19 is just a number um until it hits home so Uh, so far kami medyo meron na may casualty na kami um so medyo yung in terms of um i can comfort others siguro sabihin ko na uh, i did for others for some friends pero nung nasa sa amin na family na namin parang hindi na kami makaiyak kasi parang um hindi, we have to be strong kasi for for the others for the rest of the family we have to be strong we have to unite and help each other especially in this time na hindi namin man lang siya nakita ang ganun so um uh what else um yung grateful naman um doon sa kasama din sa resilient zone and yun sa tips nga you have to be you have to connect syempre um you have to be thankful in everything appreciate little things yeah and so um meron kami mga kids dito sa bahay and we tell them the okay lang hindi lumabas. At least wala kang sakit. Yung ganun. So, yung mga, yung mga ganun instances. So, at least medyo dun sa resilient zone, medyo meron ako na, na-check. <laughs> so, oh, kasi may, ma, ma, ano nga yun talaga, ibang klase, ibang klase yung situation natin. But, um, again, at least um, for today, I, I learned a lot from, from, the, from the presentation and uh, discussion about unity. Yun. Thank, thank you. you. Jobs. Warm hug. One virtual hug. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. What I just want to emphasize, no, the resilient zone we talked about on an ideal facing goes on. But it doesn't mean that if you are in a space wherein you are, you know, we're all at you know, a certain point uh, affected, no? it's okay not to be okay at times. And in fact, uh, I, you know, uh, these are legitimate feelings given this pandemic, given the situation. It's okay not to be okay. And by being able to uh, share that with the family, you know, that means it's, the, you know, it's helping the family create a ritual, okay? The ritual to, to express your love. Because it's about expression that all of a sudden you can't anymore because the person's gone. So helping one another, creating a ritual so everybody can express, no? It's also a way of reaching out to others. So it's not just comforting others now who are in grief, but comforting others deal with it. To have a certain portion there where it, you might want to have a night time or a love letter to whoever is the, the beloved. You have. Mm-hmm. At night, you can we can read through so that your brains, okay, would now um, sort of recharge, you know, reframe itself mm-hmm. and to look back at the memories that made you really happy together. Warm hug, Docs. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Thank you, Miss Jobs, and thanks, Doc. Uh, Joey. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mom Joey. Okay, so uh, up next we have uh, Sir Reggie. Good morning, yes. Sir Reggie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Doctor Joey. Well, the, uh, I'm Reggie Anessa from Design Management Group. Uh, the the portion which struck me the most was when and how Dr. Joey so accurately qualified the stages we are likely to be in during this crisis because I myself identified to being in one particular stage. Uh, the greatest key takeaway or insight from the presentation was that it is not necessarily bad to aim for individualism, perhaps in one's pursuit of self-discovery, fulfillment, and happiness. You do have to be compassionate to yourself to be able to give compassion also to others. But in many cases, and in very special circumstances like uh, the one we have today, collectivism counts more apparently. There comes a point that it is not anymore just about our own problems and anxieties, but about the common and greater good. Uh, the, the presentation was very relevant to my specific line of work in a way that team play is very important. When I provide for the design requirements of uh, the projects I am handling, it is never a one-man show. Everyone in the team and their individual roles matter. Also, in these dire and uncertain times for the company, I find myself now not aspiring so much for myself anymore. I simply and honestly pray and wish that the company and we all make it. And my question uh, for Dr. Joey is that, uh, what is your take on the difference between Filipinos being resilient and us Filipinos being used to so much to repeated uh, failures? And where do we draw the line, Doctora, between not finding the wrong in things around us as opposed to seeking accountability for them? Thank you. Thank you, Reg. That is a whole semester of discussion on social development. <laughs> but I will try. <laughs> I will try to answer you in, in two or three paragraphs. I think one of the things, if you ask me, I've been around, and in fact, I did a... a, a a research you know, on the resiliency of families who were affected by many, many human rights violations. And one thing that is really predominant you know, as a trait of the Filipinos is the spirituality. It's number one. It's number one you know? The strength of spirituality. You know, you talk to mothers who lost their children, you know, who was trafficked, who was, you know, uh, killed. And you talk about it, and then the one thing that's very, very crucial is the spirituality level. The faith became the anchor of the person as the foundation. It became the core value, believing that you know this too shall pass, and there is a higher being uh, responsible for everything that we, we, we look for, ask for. Second, I think it's the sense of humor of the you know? We're very agile, we're very resilient, because not only do we have sense of humor, we have families and friends connected to us. Unlike I lived abroad for quite quite a while, and then iba don, no? Don dito masarap mga apit bahay ka lang, mga tuka kahit oras ng kainan papa ka inin ka. Eh. Pag nagpunta ka sa ibang bansa, pag hindi ka invited, wa nga nga ka, mm, wait ka lang jan sa sala nila. And I think it's the the feeling, the culture of treating the whole entire community as family. Now, the tweak there is sometimes when we become too subjective, di ba? Yung mga nakikita natin, I'm pretty sure nakikita natin if there are faults, if there are mistakes. But sometimes because of the subjectivity, because we love too much, we're close to that person so much, the tendency is we sort of like sideswept it. Hindi naman yan because nandun pa rin. Uh, yung paniniwala, the person can change through. But if you don't do anything for the person to be able to correct that mistake, you are not part of the solution. You add up to more problem because the person will keep doing it over and over and over again. So there's a difference between calling the person attention, okay, 
by telling the person, you know, this, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. And I, I tell you, because of the personalistic culture of the Philippines, baka magtampo, no? But, given the opportunity that you did sort of like flag it out and offer solution, kasi minsan masyadong ang kultura talaga sa totoo lang, minsan, masyadong blaming game. Kasi eh. Oh, kasi eh. Sinabi ko na sa'yo, yan ayoko yung narinig. Sinabi ko na sa'yo. Diba? Those are things the blaming game. Instead of the blaming game, yung kanina sinasabi ko, neoplasticity, you want to, to empower ourselves with the collective thoughts. Napahiya na nga yung tao, nagkamali na nga yung tao. So the fear already, yun, na nadampin na yung spirit niya. So if you were in the person's place, no, you made a humongous mistake. Yan. Ask yourself, how would you want your supervisor or your boss talk to you to help you deal with that situation? So it's putting yourself you know, in the concept of what the person would think that feels so that you will be able to make that connection. I hope that uh, helps you. But you're welcome to attend my class anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Dr. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for that insightful question. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Sir Reggie. And I guess we have one more panelist. Uh, good morning, Sir Christian. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Joima. I am Christian Paul De Castro from the uh, Foundation Unit, uh, specifically Home Advocacy Team. Okay, so uh, I would like to thank you again for that uh, very, uh, very educative uh, presentation about uh, unity. I guess my main takeaway from uh, your discussion is how selflessness is highly embedded to us Filipinos. Um, kasi po, for example, um, actually related dun sa example ni Sir Jello kanina, parang evident kasi sa atin ng mga Filipino na yung uh, mga anak, uh, kapag lumaki na sila, tapos kapag nagkakaedad na yung kanilang mga parents, eh, ano man, ano man na mangyari, kahit nasan man sila, eh, bumabalik sila para, you know, uh, alagaan yung kanilang parents. So, I think that's uh, a very good example of uh, collectivism sa ating mga Filipino. And sa inyong talk, na-realize ko na I need to do more uh, yun pag-connect sa iba. Kasi since nagkaroon tayo ng uh, quarantines, yung pandemic, uh, Aminado ako na medyo, you know, nagiging incognito mode pa minsan, nagiging, nagiging distant sa iba. So I think I need to uh, reconnect more, reach out more. Okay? As well as yung keep learning, okay? I, need, uh, I think I need to learn new hobbies okay? during this uh, uh, community quarantines, during this pandemic. So I can uh, fully utilize my time and my skills. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. I think the most important part here is that when we do recognize it, it's already a beginning step towards achieving. So, thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sir Christian. And uh, thank you to all our panelists. No? I'm sure there are other questions from uh, our panelists or viewers. No? So if you have any questions, uh, please post them on the John Nostalge uh, Viber group. And I can always uh, forward them to Doc Joima. Doc, once again, uh, thank you for being with us now. Uh, your topic, especially the content of your talk on unity, really speaks to us, no? Uh, we may be in different places now. Uh, some are working on site, office, in sa bahay. Yet, we are all uh, united with our common experience of this pandemic. Many are anxious. Many are afraid. But I think more than ever, it will test our sense of unity. How united are we in our work? And how are we united as we look after the welfare and well-being of our colleagues? So again, uh, thank you, Dr. Joey. And uh, we look forward to having you here once again with us. So once again, ma'am, thank you so much, everyone, for viewers and listeners to our Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Hugs talaga, hugs. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank okay, you. So, so I like the massage. A happy day ahead. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.